So let me go ahead and copy this link. And then now let's go back into our page.js. And then because we are using React server components, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to say async function get book categories. Or you can call it get categories depending on how you want it. So get book categories. And then inside here, I'm going to say const res is equal to await fetch. And then I'm going to go ahead and place in my back ticks and then paste in the link that I copied. Now inside here, I want to substitute my API key because I don't want to set my API key inside here. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to go ahead and call process dot env dot next underscore public underscore api underscore key which is the name that i gave in my env local file so this part is going to go ahead and access the api key from my env local and you can see that it is grayed out that means that it is inside the git ignore somewhere uh, right here and that means that it is not going to be committed to github so people are not going to have access to this so once we do that, we want to go ahead and say if res, oh sorry, if there is no response, if it is not okay, then we just go ahead and say console dot error. Uh, you know, let me not do that. Let's say throw new error. So throw new error and then say failed to fetch books categories like so, and then. Right on the bottom of this, let's just go ahead and say return res.json like so. And then what we can do is inside server components, we can transform this entire thing into an asynchronous component. So that inside here, I can go ahead and say const books is equal to await get book categories like so. Now, let me go ahead and just go ahead and console log the books just to make sure that we're getting something. And then because this is a server component, if I save this, then the console log should now appear inside here. There we go. So you can see, let me zoom out a bit. You can see that now the console log is appearing inside here, meaning that our get request is running. Okay, so now what we need to do is the following. If I go ahead and remove the books, what I'm going to do is below the H1, I'm going to create a div, a div, and then inside this div, I'm going to map over my data. So I'm going to say books.map. And let me just check something. It needs to be books.results. Let me zoom in this as well. So it needs to be books.results because now results is the array of objects that contains the data about the categories. So it needs to be books.results and then dot map. And then for every book, or let me call it category. So category. And you know what? I should have called this categories. So categories is equal to, yeah, that is a much better naming. So categories.results.mob. And then for every category, I want to go ahead and return an article. And then inside this article, I'm going to go ahead and give it a key of, let's see, the list name or the display name or the list name encoded should all be unique for all of them. So I'm going to use the list name encoded for our unique key. So I'm going to say category dot list underscore name underscore encoded coded like so. And then inside here, I'm going to return an H2 that says category dot what dot display name. So dot display underscore name. And then below this H2, I'm going to turn a paragraph that says, let's see, the oldest published date. So for this one, as going, I'm going to say first published. So when it was first published, and this is going to say category dot oldest underscore published underscore date. Okay. And then below this paragraph, just copy this down and then change this to newest published list. So newest underscore published list published date. I don't know why I'm saying date. <laughs> and then this should be last published because it was last published on this date and it was first published on the oldest date. And then once we have that, then let's see, we need to have updated. 
So once again, add another paragraph and then say updated. And then I'm going to say category dot updated. And then save that. And then now if we take a look at our application, there we go. So we have all those categories just looking so bland like this. So let's go ahead and style it out. So I'm going to say this inside this div, which is the parent, I'm going to give this a class name of grid and a gap of four. And then for medium screens, I'm going to say grid columns two. And then for large screens, I'm going to say grid columns three. And then inside this article, I'm going to give it a class name here of padding on round of four. And then give it a border. And then a border dash neutral dash 800 and then rounded dash large. Let's save that. Let's see what we have. There we go. Looking nice already. And then on hover, I want the BG to be neutral, neutral dash 900. So that we have that on hover. And then let's have a slight transition like so. And then on the H2, give it a class name. And I'm going to say text XL and then font bold margin bottom of four and let's see save that okay that's probably too big i think i used text large in the demo and then for the paragraphs so click here and then hold down the alt key and then click the next paragraph and the next one to add multiple cursors give this a class name of text neutral dash 400 and text dash small save that and we're going to have that and then for this middle paragraph, I'm going to say margin Y of two to separate it from the top and bottom one like so. And would you look at that? We already have our first page working, but let's change the title first of all. So for our title, we're going to do this right inside the H1. I'm simply going to go ahead and get the length of the categories array using the dot length method. So I'm going to say categories categories dot results because we know that results is the array dot length and then i'm going to say categories when i save that we should see 59 categories or 59 categories and there we go so there is our home page already complete would you look at that would you look at that so in the next video we are going to begin to make our dynamic route so that we can go into the internal pages.